of our public schools, you spent one hour daily learning the rules in 12 years of English and language art classes, so upon graduation, you could speak to the masses without dangling a participle or splitting a phrase or embarrassing yourself in non-grammatical ways. But as an adult, you have probably found that English isn't the only language around. Although it may sound like the language we use, high school English should not be confused with the language spoken by people today. The words that you hear, the words that you say, can change with the time, with the place, with the crowd, and the limits good taste and the law have allowed. Each different profession, each job, each career has its own special language. And so it is here. General warranty people, when they write or they speak, use a professional jargon that is quite unique to the profession of warranty sales. And so, here's a lesson in language that you'll need to know. for actuary, a person or firm who calculates, figures, projects, and confirms the data and risks and rates you employ. A is for administrator, whose work you enjoy, since they keep all the records and process the claims and charge admin fees for their part in the game. B is for back-end profits, which come from routine repair work and maintenance done on cars that have vehicle service contracts. The term betterment comes from the fact that often when cars are fixed or repaired, they come out much better than when they went there because some of the parts that were merely okay were replaced with some better just to keep them that way. C is for car. Take that word, add an E, and get care that's provided by our company. D means deductible, what the customer pays. E is for earned premium, the amount any day in the life of a policy's coverage time that's available to spend to pay claims, bills, or fees from a pro rata scale for each policy. F is for front-end profits, which come when a contract is sold, a commission to sell. F is for first-day coverage, the kind that begins when the name is put on the line. A fully insured program is one in which premiums paid go into a fund from which the company makes all the payments and claims that the dealers present in the company's name. G is for general warranty. Now, you knew we would slip in that term somehow. H is for holder in due course, which was a doctrine by which banks avoided a fuss by disclaiming involvement with what they finance. The FTC into that song and dance. I means implied, which some warranties are, which means when you purchase a new truck or car, you can expect it to work and run properly. That's the reason why some dealers sell warranties. Then someone else has liability for implied warranty. And with a disclaimer, the dealer is free. I also means in-house service contracts, which mean that the dealer is the person who backs what is sold with a contract of his own design. When dealers do this, they usually find that an in-house vehicle device program administrator will provide the expertise needed to help fill the bill. J, K, and L mean just keep on looking. We've got more words to learn. We're really cooking. M is for Magnuson Moss Federal Trade Commission Warranty Improvement Act. They'd had laws all along in existing state statutes, but Magnuson Moss put teeth in the acts used for liability for implied warranties. Now contracts are ruled by the old FTC. M's for Mechanical Breakdown Insurance, which guarantees mechanical parts and endurance. Mechanical breakdown, as you probably know, means a covered part fails and the car just won't go. N is for net rate, all charges and fees the dealer must pay to the insurance company. O 
is for obligor, the customer's friend who contracts to fix or at least make amends for repairs and or breakdowns without any fuss. They are really the good guys. The good guys are us. P. Pre-existing condition is a problem, I'm told, that exists in the car at the time it is sold. P is for premium, which in insurance talk means a payment for policies that dealers have bought. What the customers pay for the contracts they buy are not premiums. Premiums go to the insurance guy. P is for pro rata, a system for splitting the money and time for the protection one's getting in equal amounts for the coverage time. Q is for quit. Not yet, you're just fine. R is for retro, either active or seated. The agent gets paid when the deal is completed. When the policy's earned and the losses are paid, then the agent will get the commission he'd made. Rule of 78, which is also an R, is a way of computing the earnings thus far if a policy's canceled and money's returned. It figures how much of the premiums earned. Service contract begins with an S, and for many buyers, it is the best deal around, for it gives them, you see, an option to augment their car's warranty. S is for stop loss insurance, and you can be sure that it does what it says it will do. It assumes liability over a given amount in the form of an aggregate dollar loss count, a percent of the premium, or a set figure per loss. Sublet repair is when the boss of a garage is not able or equipped to do the job that he's promised to get done for you, so he contracts it out to an outside source. S is for substitute transportation. Of course, you know what that is if you've had the bad luck to take your car to the shop, then find you're stuck there for lack of some sub-transportation. Some contracts provide for this sad situation. Suggested retail rate, or gross rate as well, is the amount charged the customer for the service we sell. That brings us on to the letter of T, which stands for trust fund and also trustee. The meaning's so simple you may even laugh. They're assigned to hold money on another's behalf. U is for ugly, which some people get when their auto is scratched or totally wrecked. That's the reason for warranties and contracts for service. It makes them less anxious and angry and nervous. V, vehicle service contract administrator, who dealers will turn to sooner or later for administrative support that they offer so well, like designing the programs and contracts to sell, determining rates and processing claims and a hundred more services that I could name. Now, vehicle service contracts have a waiver, which some buyers sign when trying to save a dollar or two at the time of the sale. They're left on their own to hope nothing will fail. Warranty starts with a W. It's breakdown protection that's given to you as part of the price of the auto you buy. There's no choice in the matter, so don't even try to reduce or replace or refuse it at all. Which brings us to warranter, the part of the chain of distribution of products which makes the claim to repair or replace with a similar kind defective merchandise during a specified time. W also can mean wear and tear, which differs from breakdown. This is when there is a gradual loss of the performance one gets due to age and use, not due to failure or wrecks. X marks the spot where the customer signs. Y is for you, out on the front lines. Z is for zombie, the grim walking dead, which is how you must feel after having your head stuffed full of words and professional jargon. I'm sure you must feel you got more than you bargained for when you entered this session today. But get ready, folks. There's more on the way. More phrases, local slang words and catchwords, some will make sense, some seem absurd, but all are part of the language we use as part of the general warranty crew.
As you enter the world of the new and used car sales profession, it will help you if you know a little bit about what goes on behind that mysterious microcosm. There is a certain magic in the language of the car lot. With a touch of the tongue, a car can become a toad. A salesman can become a bird dog. A customer can become a grape. And a sale can sound just like a baseball game. Let's try to break the spell of the selling crowd as we decipher and translate the language of the lot. Many of the names given to customers are self-explanatory. For instance, there's the shopper. The tire kicker. And the be back. They have little or no intention of buying anytime soon. There are some customers whose mission seems to be to make it hard for the salesman. The chiseler. The grinder. The pipe smoker. The slide ruler. And the if come. Some have financial or credit problems, like the flake, the one who's buried under bills, and the ones who are edgy about their finances. Some are new to the game, like the fresh pop and the door pop. Some don't even realize that there is a game, the mullet and the mooch. And some potential customers are okay. A prospect is one who is ready to buy and able to buy within 72 hours. A grape says yes to anything the salesman has to offer. And the laydown is ready to get laid away by the lucky salesperson who meets him at the door. The salespeople, too, have names that describe the jobs they do. The bird dog, for instance, is one who seeks out potential buyers and sends them to particular dealers. When the customers come through the door, they are often greeted by the salesperson whose name is up on the list. This might be the novice green pea or the experienced hen. It might be the liner or the old pro climber. If it is a straight sell operation, the customer stays with the same person from womb to tomb or from the beginning to the close of the deal. Some operations use a TO or turnover system of working customers in which the liner turns the customer over to another salesman, a sales manager or the TO man to close the deal. The closer or desk man often works with the customer in an office called the booth or the box. There are so many forms to sign during the closing that most customers lose touch with what is going on and the closer puts the buyer on ether. While the buyer sits there in a state of purchasing paralysis, the closer begins the paperwork. They go through the pinks. Ownership certificates. And the whites. The current registration card. And the six pack which includes the notice of sale or transfer of interest and federal odometer disclosure, the bill of sale, authorization of payoff, payoff adjustment, and power of attorney. There's also the LAHA, credit life, accident and health coverage, the TNL, tax and license, the RS, report of sale, and the tags. Usually, the only paper that the buyer was ever really interested in was the tissue, or the Monroney, which is the retail price posted on the car's window sticker. There are many types of deals that can be made, and many mysterious transactions that can take place on the lot, especially if there is a combination sales force, that is, dealing with new and used cars. Some of these transactions include the bounce or the bump, which is when the price is raised. The come on. The dealer trade, when a dealer exchanges one of his cars with another dealer to meet the customer's requests. Flooring, which occurs when the dealership's banker or the manufacturer finances the dealer's inventory down payment. When a car is sold for the full sticker price, it is a full bore. When the dealership finances the deal, it is house financing. House financing should not be confused with a house deal. A house deal is a sale made by a member of the dealership's management with no commission to a salesperson. There's the Mickey or Mickey Mouse deal in which the dealership makes a loan for the down payment or arranges a buyer assisted loan from a small loan company or mouse house. Leading a car buyer to such a loan company and having him pledge his furniture as collateral is termed sending him on a trip to Disneyland and mousing him for his sticks. A Mickey deal has absolutely no relationship to a mini deal, which is simply one that makes very little profit. 
Sometimes a deal is made backwards, starting with the monthly payments. That's a rollback deal. Often these deals sound like they're being made during a baseball game. You hear about ballpark figures, high ball figures, low ball amounts, home run deals, which makes the maximum profit and sells all the available insurance, and the tag-along third baseman. A customer can be speared with an outrageous promise made just to get him on the lot. Customers are often switched from the car they were originally interested in to one that makes a better deal for the salesman. Salespeople, by the way, don't always work as a team. Sometimes one will skate the other by taking a returning customer and closing a deal that the other began. They will do this dastardly deed to avoid splitting the commission. Sometimes they will avoid the dealership altogether by curbing or selling their own car on the lot. When salespeople start talking about money, watch out. They might mention the book price, which comes from the Kelly Blue Book, or NADA book, which gives wholesale and retail prices for cars going back six years. A deuce means $200, and a nickel means $500, not five cents. Front end refers to the down payment. Gross is the amount of profit realized on a deal prior to deducting sales and delivery expenses. A reader is a check. Pack means to quote a monthly payment that is five or ten dollars more than the actual amount to leave room for insurance. Residual is the termination value of an automobile that is being leased. And retail is the normal way an average individual purchases an automobile. Does anyone really pay retail? But all of this talk about money and cars and deals and sales centers around one item, the car. In the language of the lot, cars go by many aliases. The good ones are called cherries and cream puffs, an eyeballer, strokes, frontline ready, wheels. The not so good ones get called things like beater, hog, iron, sled and toad. If they're new, they get a PDI, or pre-delivery inspection, to see that everything's okay. If they're used, they get detailed to make them look new again, including the interior, or guts. All of this fixing up, especially on new cars, is called the dealer prep and adds to the price of the car. But prices vary from the fleet rate dealers get for buying many cars at one time at a substantial discount to the home run deal put together by the desk man in the chute. It's all a part of the profession of new and used car sales. It's all part of the world you'll be entering as a member of the General Warranty Corporation. It's a world in which you'll be speaking the language of the lot. Mm -hmm.